welcome to State of Unity Podcast, where we talk with people who used to live the ordinary and are now living in the extraordinary. A master of many trades, Joshua juggles family, work, and volunteering. On this episode, he shares how simply observing other cultures allowed him to better understand, respect, and help. Listen in today as we talk about how he uses skills across multiple platforms to create rhythm and synergy. Well, Joshua, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know with, I can only imagine, uh, see eight kids, two nonprofits, and was it just one company or? (laughs) Yeah, well, it's a consulting business, so I, I kind of help actually help other companies run their businesses. So it's sort of like I'm running about nine businesses right now, right now. So it's a, it's a, it's a life, you know, it's, it, but it's good. My fruit grows up on other people's trees. Uh, I love to get underneath people and help them grow. And so, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me on. Of course. Yeah. Obviously your time is extremely valuable and limited. So definitely appreciate you. Yeah, so I, I had um, I'm in my I'm in my third career. My first career was in the litigation industry, where oh. I helped like attorneys uh, win hundred million dollar lawsuits by putting together a better PowerPoint and running all the technology. And I was so kind of fed up with um, kind of just greed and power and the whole machine that I was like, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to go do some good. So uh, I quit my job and, and I, I spent seven years in uh, 21 countries studying global poverty. And so I had a ton of uh, trips, uh, you know, all over Africa, Asia, South America, just, you know, traveling all over the world, just really discovering what does the world look like? What are people doing? What is, what does uh, good look like? What are the people who are doing good? <laughs> what, what are they doing and how are they doing it? And then after that, uh, in 2010, I kind of took a, a split where I would, I, I realized that in my opinion, one of the most effective things that I could do was equip and train leaders. So I started a company called Grow Ability to equip and train leaders to run organizations. Um, and then in the nonprofit world, I started uh, to two organizations under one umbrella, but one of them is called Instruments of Joy, where we give quality instruments uh, to musicians in need. And then the other one is uh, Picture the Nations, where we basically represent countries by the beauty of their people photographically instead of uh, by the stigma of their poverty. So kind of like if National Geographic um, basically gave all the money to the people in the photographs that's kind of what we do with <laughs> picture the nation so yeah so that's my that's my crazy life and I have eight kids <laughs> so that sounds I can't think of things that would be much polar opposite than the career that you had and then just running off abroad for what you said 10 years so what <laughs> that had to be pretty scary to just take that leap uh, it was, you know, um, it, in a sense, it was, yeah, it was terrifying. Um, but I, I think it was actually less terrifying than staying in a career that I hated. And um, maybe hated is too strong. Staying in a career that was stressing me out. <laughs> um, and I just, I didn't want to, at, at the time that I kind of transitioned into my second career, I was 27 years old and there were tons of options if uh, if it didn't work out. If I couldn't make the nonprofit thing work, then I would just go back, you know, <laughs> into the into the courtroom world. Um, but it really was something also just um, I think I think everybody has a purpose. I think we're designed. I think God makes us all with unique gifts and skill sets and abilities. And, and I think until you're actually doing what God designed you to do, you're not going to be fully satisfied. So I knew in that career, like I am making money with my talent and I am, uh, you know, able to exploit the, the abilities that I have, but I don't feel like I'm doing anything on, I, I don't feel like I'm maximizing the purpose of what, whatever I'm made to do. So um, I kind of had like an exploration uh, time where I just I had enough money from making money with my talent to start traveling around 
and I had enough faith maybe <laughs> to uh, just spend all my money in, in just giving it away to see what would happen, you know, <laughs> Let, let's go and check this out. And then after, um, so at the end of that whole season, um, then I was like, okay, now I know what I'm designed to do. I'm designed to equip leaders and I'm designed to use art to fight poverty. And so what, what can I do? How can I, how can I equip artists? How can I, uh, so I'm like, well, I'm a musician. I can help musicians with quality musical instruments. I'm a photographer. I can help uh, use photography to fight poverty. And then I'm, I'm probably most gifted at uh, just equipping leaders and systems and structure and the, the balance of vision and rhythm and community. So let me, let me go help leaders to balance vision, rhythm, and community. There's so much in that. That sounds like a, like, uh, yeah, great. A lot of words you just use. They're really good words. <laughs> you know? well, one that sticks out that you used is rhythm because you talk a lot about music and then using rhythm, obviously it relates to music, but in this aspect, what do you mean by that? So we get kind of what we sow. Um, I, when I was, um, you know, kind of early on in, in my career, like I, I thought the most important thing was the idea. Like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to have this great idea. Like everybody's going to think this is the best thing in the world, but an idea doesn't like, you know, produce anything. I can have the idea of growing corn all day long, but unless I go out and till the ground and put the seed in and fertilize it and water it and weed it, it's not going to actually produce fruit. So rhythms are kind of the things that in a sense, they give us freedom. Uh, if I, if I have a rhythm of practicing piano, then I can go later and I can play whatever I want to play because I put in the rhythm to practice. So there's uh, I think in a sense, we get this idea of freedom being just unconstrained from any, um, you know, responsibility or anything like this. I have freedom. I don't, I don't have to listen to anything, I, you know, but in a sense, it's not real freedom. Real freedom is like when you can go and play jazz, you know, here I am, I've practiced, I hear this thing in my head and I'm able to translate it to my fingers. And that really happens from a rhythm of, um, you know, kind of practice and, it, you know, and, and to the thinking of that in light of sort of travel, I think we should have a rhythm of travel. I think we should have a rhythm of getting outside of our comfort zone and thinking about different cultures, different people, um, realizing that our rhythms are way different than other people's rhythms. And maybe my rhythms aren't even that important. Like maybe I should develop new rhythms or there's so much that happens, I think, in experiencing other cultures. But in any culture, if you're a leader, and you're going to run an organization, you need to have some good rhythm. <laughs> you know, I've got to balance my checkbook. I've got to, you know, do my marketing strategy. I've got to make, you know, uh, I've got to put in the time, you know, things like that. So the thing that comes to mind when you say that is, so, and I've heard similar quotes along, you know, without, they say like, discipline is the route to freedom or something like yeah. that. But when you say rhythm, it makes me think of, like the earth and the patterns and the rhythm. So the sun goes up, the sun goes down, the seasons. And if you were to take all that away, the chaos and the just nothingness that would happen yeah. as a result. Um, yeah, what if I, like it's in the middle of, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon and like, oh, the sun decided to go down or <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's the middle of summer and it's like, hey, the temperature is just going to drop like 60 degrees and now we're going to just, you know, but there is such a, our world is full of rhythm. Um, and, and cycles like a water system, you know, the clouds, they drop the rain and then it goes to the mountain, there's the little streams, it goes to the rivers, it goes back to the ocean, it goes back to the cloud. <laughs> and there's, so discovering our rhythm and how, I think maybe even more importantly, discovering how to interact, how to create rhythms that interact with the rhythms that are already created and to make sure that those things are in synergy. That's a big piece of what I, that's what we do at Grow Building. We, we help people with vision. You know, how are you living on purpose and what is purpose and how can you help people? And then rhythm is like, okay, what are the kind of the fundamental strategies for, this is the three things if I'm a business owner, I, I must do each year. These are the three things I must do each quarter. These are the three things I must do each month. 
these are the three things I must do each week. And then it, it kind of simplifies that, but it, it really does create the rhythm. And then eventually it's, uh, and then the third thing rather, not eventually, but is community. Community is how do I serve other people? How do I make friends? How do I develop coaches and critics and uh, connectors and, you know, uh, as many other C words as I can come up with, you know, how do I, how, I, how do we, you know, get out there and make a difference in the community? Mm, that's really, really well said. I love that. Um, so was your family, when you decided to make this dramatic switch and leave the career that you probably went to school for and spent a lot of money on, were they supportive and encouraging of your ideas and switch or... Did you grow up in an in a environment that was, you know, kind of just open to things like that or? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's kind of interesting. My wife, um, my wife is, 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 is pretty incredible. You know, she, we have eight kids and uh, I travel around the world and, you know, do all this stuff. But um, in a sense, what happened was, is that, I was, I was kind of a workaholic, you know, I was, I was stuck in the machine. And so my mind was so engaged in just how am I going to make everything work? How am I going to make the money work? What are my responsibilities? I've got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this, that I was, I wasn't really until you're living on purpose. You're not, you're not like a complete human. You're, you're kind of like a person in development. Like we're people, we're people, but we don't necessarily have personhood. So personhood is something that really needs to be developed. So I think for my wife, even though it was super challenging to kind of take a risk and jump out and, and try a lot of new things, I think she was able to see a lot of the personhood development and was like, okay, I'm in. I don't, I don't know what this is exactly like, but I'm on board. You know, let's, let's try to do this. And then it was also good for her, you know. I, I, I come back, you know, Sarah, my wife, Sarah, she's not as much... Um, she's like super happy to be at home. I'm like super happy to be at home for like a week. And then it's like, okay, so <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe we should go somewhere now, you know? Um, but, and she's actually come on, on some trips uh, with me, uh, amazing trips, you know, trips to Israel and, and trips to Uganda and Ghana and uh, no, not Ghana, Uganda and maybe Ghana. I can't remember exactly where she went with me, but, <laughs> um, but uh so, yeah, I, I think that's when you're doing what you're supposed to do, stuff just works out. Yeah, I agree. So it sounds like travel massively impacted your life. It kind of did a 180 shift with you. So did you have? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my, I, can, I can talk about that all day long. So uh, my first trip, 2005, uh, I go to Ethiopia. And I was actually, I was actually trying to go to Sudan. And uh, when we showed up, it was like my first exposure to like, okay, there's a lot of like corruption and craziness, like all over the place, because like the, um, that we were supposed to have this charter that went from Ethiopia to Sudan. And I was going with a Sudanese lost boy to go back to his initial village. And just like, he's now a, he was a registered nurse. So it was like, let's go see what we can do and do some medicine like in Sudan. So when I got over there, they were like, oh yeah, now we're actually not going to do that unless you give us $10,000. And we're like, oh, we already spent all the money to like, you know, get, and it was like, well, and so that was kind of like a, a big eye opener, but but then I was actually, I kind of was off the beaten path. I'm like, okay, I've got extra time in Addis Ababa. Let me walk around. And um, I was walking by this gutter. I was walking down this like, you know, this crazy street in this gutter. It's like 105 degrees outside. It's just like, it's absolutely crazy. And I looked down in the gutter and there's this kid and he's just staring up at me. And he obviously lives in the gutter. He's got like disease on his face. He's got like half a shirt. And I looked down in this gutter and I, at that moment, I realized like, I have so much potential to do good that this kid never had. He was born into a place where, you know, um, you work all day, like a construction job, 
I was talking to actually, uh, there were some pastors and some people that I was talking to on this trip. And I was like, well, can't people like, you know, can't you just be like the best worker and then like grow because you're the best worker. And the pastor was like, you see that guy working construction. I'm like, yeah, he's going to work 12 hours today. I'm like, yeah. And just like, and he's going to make a dollar 50. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> and then he's like, and then he's going to go buy dinner for his family. And that's going to cost a dollar 49. <laughs> and it's like, so you tell me how that guy is going to do better. So I'm like looking at this kid and I'm seeing a guy like working his butt off 10 hours a day, like doing construction stuff in Ethiopia and I'm walking down the street and I look in the, uh, I look in the gutter and there's this like a kid living in the gutter. And, uh, and I realized like, okay, I, um, I have more, I have more access. I have more opportunity. Like the things that the, the things that I have capacity to do because of the gifts that I was given, the education, the places where I was born, the things that I've experienced, the, the lessons, like how can I not fully use those to fight poverty, to make a difference, to make an impact? It's not really, um, maybe it's not so much about like, what do I want to do and what am I so, what do I love? But maybe it's, what am I designed to do? What do I have the capacity to do? Where, where can I go? So on that same trip, we were at this like ghetto and I had my, I had my new camera and I was just like, snap, 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 snap. And this lady is, is starts yelling at me and she's like, she is so mad and she is yelling and she's like, ah, and I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? So I'm like, I have like a guide with me and I'm like, hey guide, like, what did I do? What's that lady saying? And he looked at me and he said, that lady said, don't take my picture if you can't fix my poverty. And like, it was like, I was just like, oh crap. <laughs> like here I am, there's this kid in the gutter and I'm already passionate about poverty. But then I'm like, I got my camera and I really was, and that was the moment where I said, I went over to the lady. I was like, I won't, I won't do that. And I will, I will, I will do everything that I can with this camera to help fix your poverty. And, um, and so that's one of the, that, that was like the birth really on my first trip in 2005 of like picture the nations. So with picture of the nations, one of the things that we never do ever is take pictures of people without asking permission first, like, can I take your picture? And then second we we print them out and we give them to people. And so every time we print the picture, we give it to somebody and we're like, Hey, this is to show your beauty. Like the reason why we're in your country is to show the beauty of your people, uh, in this country. Uh, but then we also give the books you know, two organizations that fight poverty in those, that, that country, and they use them as fundraisers and things like that. And so like we finished our Haiti book. This is our, this is our Haiti book, which like, check out that picture. Huh? Yeah. That's so cool. Um, where, you know, I think we've sent more than $50,000 of relief to Haiti uh, by getting these books out, which is really cool. You know, it's really, it's a, uh, it's a really cool thing, but anyway, I know I said a whole lot there. And uh, so if I would have never been on that trip, I, I would have been, I would have been like, um, I would have had this attitude that the, the problem, the reason why people are poor is they're not working hard enough. And if they work as hard as I do, everything's great. You know, going on that trip, I'm like, no, the reason why people are in poverty is there's corruption and leadership. The reason why there's people in poverty, is there's systematic um like greed and corruption and meanness <laughs> you know i don't i don't know it's like poverty poverty isn't just an easy fix like you can't just say oh there's poverty oh let's go fix poverty i'm going to buy you a goat and everything's going to be better like that doesn't fix poverty like po poverty is a huge cloud of chaos and the only thing you can do to actually fight poverty is build bridges that grow out of poverty to help people climb on the bridge get on the ladder out of poverty. And, um, and so all of that, like the exposure of how the world really is was fundamental to me. And it, and it drives kind of what I do. It, it drives every day. You know, it's why I work so hard now is totally different. I'm, I'm not working hard for status or success. I'm working hard to serve and to love people. And uh, it's so much more fulfilling, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 
coming from the United States where we are that country that's known for working hard and you'll be delivered. So same as you, you know, I think prior to my travels abroad, I, I had the same mentality for the most part, you know, you see, I did have some experience with like the foster system here, not me personally, but just being involved in it and learning about that. Yeah. That I felt like, you know, if the if you hone in on your resources, you have the opportunity and, you know, the grants and things like that, that I like to believe you, you would be able to have an equal opportunity as anyone else going to school in the United States. But when you go abroad, it's, you can't even compare it. And I, I no. think you can stay in the United States and fully understand what that's like. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you, if you don't, there's what's the uh, Augustine quote, like the, the world is a book. And if you don't travel, you stay on only one page. Oh. Um, that's, that's kind of the way it is like without, without exposure, like we, we don't even understand our own world. Like one of the, one of the analogies that I use a lot, if I'm talking like a, like a school or something like that, is I take a box of 64 crayons and I'm like, okay, see this box. And I open up the box and I'm like, this crown represents the population of the entire world. Like, see how many beautiful colors there are. There's lots of different people. It's so great. And I'm like, now, if this box of crowns represents the population of the entire world, how many crowns represent the United States of America? And everybody's like, oh, 50 or, you know, I don't know. And so I take out red, white, and blue. And I say, okay, if this box of 64 crowns represents the entire world, the population of America literally is one, two, three, red, white, and blue. So there's an entire world that is 61 crowns still in the box. What are the three crowns? Don't make our, don't make our assessment of what the world is based on the three crowns in the box. Make your, make your assessment of what the world is by getting around to all the other crowns. So I've been to 27 uh, countries and I, I just, uh, I couldn't, I, golly the first like five countries I was like I'm gonna go do something good and then the rest of them was like I'm not gonna do anything good I'm gonna go learn as much as I can and then I'm gonna do as much <laughs> good as I can after I learn you know you if you go to a culture assuming that you're gonna go fix something broken uh you're already broken <laughs> like the, the way to go to a culture is learn what works uh what are you learning how did you get here what you know what's your story find that out. And then you have sort of a relational jumping point to where you can maybe teach some of the stuff that you learned and give access to some of the tools that you have. Um, so, yeah. So I was just in Peru with a group um, and we dispatched laptops to this organization there called Ananyao. And it's basically an after school program to help these, you know, with the world transitioning to being more digital now and more connected. And, and then you have places like this where their parents and their grandparents grew up as farmers and you know no access to any technology of any kind. And now they're starting to see this, this mesh of worlds come together. And so it's this very fine line of respecting the culture and the upbringing and the family structure. And then teaching them these tools so that they can be, you know, part of society. Uh, not that they're not a part of society without it, but no, to, yeah. um, to give them more opportunities and more access to resources and college. And, and it was really cool being, you know, just what you watch on TV and hear and see in the news of the, just the school systems here in the United States and the lack of, enthusiasm for education it seems to be and then going there and seeing just how grateful these kids are for 10 laptops that they can yeah. share amongst themselves and yeah. really understanding the opportunity that such a simple thing brings them it it's just encouraging to see that you know there are kids out there that want that opportunity and if you give it to them they're probably going to do amazing things with it and so it's really just finding where those people are and seeing what you can do for it. So, yeah, I think back to your point is it just starts with observing and listening and understanding. Yeah. We, we, 
America is number one at a lot of things. We're certainly not number one at all the things. So the 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 thing when you when you start traveling around, like everybody's like, oh, there's an American, and it's because like the Americans go around, and we're like, we're number one at all the things. <laughs> it's like, That's no, so you're not. Like you have, you know, shut up, L- turn your ears on, like listen. You're not number one at all the things. <laughs> yeah. You can be but like what we are really good at. Americans are really good at infrastructure. So we we're from the time that we're born, we're like, when's the garbage truck coming? And like, oh, electricity and oh, here's the water. And like, so we 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 feel like wealth is infrastructure. And so we um we are like so good at like building infrastructure. Like, no, we can't do this until this. You, you know, we're gonna build the first floor until we have the basement settled and all the plumbing and everything. We get we gotta have all these things in line. What I learned traveling around, especially in the developing world, is uh, I learned a lot more what love your neighbor as yourself looks like. I learned a lot more like the the value of relationship and the beauty of celebrating every moment. Like we, we don't know how to celebrate right now because we only celebrate when all the infrastructure is perfect and everything went perfect. And then at the end of it, we're like, okay, this was this was perfect. We had great infrastructure. So now I could celebrate. In the developing world, it's like, you know what? This breeze feels great. I'm going to celebrate this breeze. This this lollipop, it's incredible. Like, I'm going to celebrate this lollipop. Like, this meal that we're having, we're having a good conversation. Let's celebrate that. And we, like, we get we get so bogged down in, like, well, am I the best? Like, I'm, I'm only the best, right? Is it? Yeah, we, we, we lose sight of life. We're, we're more human doings than human beings. And, uh, and I think traveling around the world will teach you how to be more of a human being being and not so much a human doing Um, which doesn't mean you can't have rhythms we already covered that but so (laughs) (laughs) so true so you as your position is you're building a lot of people up so who helps build you up who's your superhero who um you know i think there is um there is several from a, from a mentorship standpoint, um, most of the mentorship that I have actually comes from books and most of it comes from books from people who are dead. (laughs) So, so that, that might sound crazy, but the, the, the best, like when somebody writes a book, they're taking like a lot of work and effort and a lot of life energy and they are sharing that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book and I'm like, what? This takes so much more effort than I, I could ever imagine to like get, because I want it to be perfect. I want it to be something that really is great. That impacts lives that, that shares the lessons that I've learned and really made that important. So in our, in our world, we don't take so much time to actually invest in something and really, really just dump it into like concise expert form. We just tweet and move on. Hey, here's what I think, tweet, gone. You know, here's what I think, Instagram, done. Like, here's what I think. But so I love, I love, love to really study and analyze the books that people write, especially people that I, I think are interesting or um, I respect. So first book I read all the time is the Bible, you know, call me old fashioned, but the, the one who created the universe might have something to say about the universe. So I'm reading that every day. Like I, I figured that out. Uh, I, my goal in life is to love people the way Jesus did. Uh, you know, and that I wish I could say that, yeah, I do that. That's my goal. That's where I'm headed. That's what I wish. That's what I want. That's what I strive for. Um, in, uh, but in like, in business things, like I read like these old, like people that everybody thinks is boring, like Peter Drucker and uh, Albert Deming and like all these management thinkers. Um, in, uh, so those of those that's one of my best mentors i would say is books um secondarily um i think everybody needs like there's like five people that we need to have in our life and surround ourselves with so one is we need coaches so i've got a coach named nancy reese um who kind of just chews me up every time 
<laughs> me with her. It's like, Hey, how come she didn't do this? What are you thinking about this? Like, she's a, she's a really great coach. She, she, she spurs me on. Um, I've got uh, a coach that is the president of a foundation that um, kind of just helped my, like exploded my mind to make me think bigger and see farther and like have a better 20 year vision. Um, I've got, uh, my parents are just great, like all around, um, you know, really help. So coaches, we need coaches. Second thing we need is cheerers. People who are just like, this is awesome. You know, you're doing so great. Um, and so I think my kids are cheers and, uh, I've got lots of friends that are just like, you know, that, that speak into your life. Um, the third thing that you need is your comrades. These are like your buddies, you know, who, who's like, these are people like my buddy, Ricky, like my buddy, Sam, like these are people that just kind of, you do life with them and you walk with them. And then you need your critics. These are people that maybe you don't even like and don't like you. And, but, and they like point out, Hey, you have ketchup on your face. It's like, shut up. I don't want to know about that. Uh, but your critics are actually really, really good in terms of like helping you, you know, it's like free advice. Like you don't have to pay a consultant if you have critics that can just like point out like what things that you need to improve. We're, we're so, this is another thing in other cultures, they look at critics and they're just like, shut up, shut up. And they fight and then they're like, okay, we're okay. Here we're just like, oh, how did you criticize me? Like you said something that I don't like. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go die now. It's like, what? That, that doesn't happen around the world. Just in America. Like, oh, I'm so offended that I, I can't, like, I can't go on with my life anymore. Um, so you got coaches, you got comrades, you got cheers, you got critics. And there's another C that I can't remember. I'm still working on this. <laughs> there's like a, there's another one. Uh, I'll remember it probably in a second. Then I'll, I'll, I'll say it back. But those are, I don't know if that answered your question at all, but I, I, I seek out, I actively seek out people and kind of just figure out like, okay, is this somebody that can coach me? Is this somebody that can critique me? Is this somebody that can walk alongside with me? Is this somebody that can cheer me? Oh, and then you have, um, it's the equivalent. I can't remember the C word, but it's like teachers, like the books like that I went, went through for. These are, you know, the consultants. These are people that really help me um, think through process and, uh, you know, ma make sure that my vision, rhythm, and community are all in alignment. Love that. It's really tangible and easy to, I think, seek out. So I'm going to make that list and make sure I have this. I had people popping in my mind as you were going through them. So yeah. Yeah, Isn't that cool? It's like, there's, yeah. they're all there. Like we, we need those community. We need community. Mm -hmm. um, we're not designed, like we're, people aren't designed for independent. We're, we're, like we're not designed for independence. Like I don't need anybody else. And we're not designed for dependence. Like I just need you so much. We're really designed for interdependence, which is sort of this balance between, um, I, you need me, I need you, but we also are holding our own and we also like only need you sometimes, but it's, it's not like it's interdependent. It's community, it's teamwork, it's uh, collaboration. If, if you're, if you're just a dependent person, like I just need these things, like uh, you got to develop that a little bit. If you're just independent, it's like, you know, I hope your world that you live in by yourself is great. <laughs> so, but interdependence is this, is this synergy where I've really, I learned to love other people and they love me and we just work together in community. That's another thing I'm learning from the Bible that I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> make, make happen in my own life. Cause it's a, uh, it's a, it's personhood and community are not easy. They are, they require uh, work. They require a rhythm. So there you go. Um, and comes to mind a quote by Jay-Z, you do you and I'll do me. And at the end of the day, we can do we. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> more than I do, but. <laughs> 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 anyway, well, thank you again. This has been just great tidbits of good information and fun storytelling. So um you shared your company, GrowAbility. Is there anything else we can do to help support you and your missions? Oh, man, if, if people check out instrumentsofjoy.org or picturesofthenations.org, um, that's great. That's, that's uh, real opportunities to serve people, 
uh, with instruments of joy, we've given out like 617 quality musical instruments in 67 countries. So there's, there's tons of people all over the world right now who um, they're as good as Beethoven, but they don't have an instrument. Mm. And so we've got a, you know, 200 bucks, you can give them an instrument. Uh, with Picture of the Nations, we need really gifted photographers who will go on photo giving trips and just, you know, you can you can make money in your photo business. But then on this one, it's like you're not going to make any money. You're going to pay to go on a trip, <laughs> but you're going to get and you're going to give all the photos to to other people. So um, that's kind of what Picture of the Nation does. And then our podcast, Growability Podcast, is really fun if, if you want to learn about vision, rhythm and community. So. Awesome. And just a quick question with the instruments, if people had instruments that they wanted to donate, is that something that they would contact you for? Or is it just you financial? No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what we do with every donated instrument is uh, we, we make sure first of it, that it's in good shape. We repair it, set it up. Uh, we get it uh, into the hands of a musician in the developing world who, who needs a quality instrument. And then we take a picture and give that picture back to the person who donated the instrument. So if you've got a guitar sitting in the corner collecting dust, replace that with a picture of somebody that's playing. That's and so that's, uh, yeah, that's what we do. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you again. I really appreciate your time. I won't take any more of it and um, look forward to connecting with you in the future. I'll have all the links to your websites and cool things that you're doing in, in the show notes. Um, and take care. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, spread the word, share with a friend, post it, comment, shout out, let us know. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another episode. Follow us on our socials and be sure to check out stateofunity.org for upcoming group experiences. This is Kara Irene, hoping we leave you feeling inspired to do more.